this section is talking all about multiplying polynomials. And technically, we've been multiplying polynomials. Um, we were just calling them monomials before. So now we're going to look at multiplying a little bit larger things. But the ideas are still going to be the same. Remember that whenever you're working with variables, you have all those exponent rules. So when you multiply like bases, you have to add the exponents. Keep that in mind as we go through this. Now for this very first problem, we have 6x times 3x squared. So again, we're multiplying monomials. Now I'm going to go through this uh, kind of the, the complete written out way so you can see exactly what's happening. And then we're going to learn to take some shortcuts. So if we say 6x, that literally means 6 times x. And then 3x squared literally means 6 times x times x. And we're multiplying those things together. So this is just a gigantic multiplication here. If you'll remember, multiplication is both associative and commutative. So meaning that you can multiply in any order you want to. If I were to rearrange this so that I had all the numbers together and all of the x's together, it would look more like this. And that's a legal math move because multiplication being commutative and associative. Now we can multiply things that are alike the numbers. 6 times 3 would be 18, and x times x times x is x cubed. Remember, when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So this is 18 times x cubed, which we can write as 18x cubed. Now, can you see that you just multiply number parts and letter parts? Once you see that, then it becomes actually much, much easier. So let's look at this next problem. Let's try using that shortcut. If we were to multiply this out, we'd multiply the number parts, which are 2 times negative 3 times 4, which is 24. And then we would multiply our letter parts. x times x squared times x to the fifth. We'd have to add the exponents to get x to the eighth. So our answer is negative 24x to the eighth. With this next problem, though, we see we're multiplying by a monomial, but we're multiplying to more than one thing. Remember that distribution idea? We reviewed it a little bit last time. We need to distribute here. So we're going to have two separate sort of um, you know terms in here, but we're going to do them one at a time. Let's multiply negative 3a times 2a, number parts, then letter parts. So that would be negative 6 a squared. Now we're going to multiply negative 3a times a 7. Negative 3 times 7 would be negative 21. And then we also have our a. Now those won't combine together. They're not the same terms. They're not like terms. So we just have to um, say that that's our answer. We can't go any further. Lastly, for this, um, this video, we have a monomial times a trinomial. But our idea is still the exact same thing. We're going to be distributing this throughout those parentheses. So doing that one at a time, we have, looking at those first terms here, do the number parts first. 4 times 7 would be 28. And then x times x cubed would give us x to the fourth. And then our y squared, well, we don't have any y's to multiply it to, so it's just y squared. Now let's multiply to the next term, doing the same thing. 4 times 3 be our number part, x times x squared, and then y squared times y squared. So that would give us 12x cubed y to the fourth. Now let's multiply it to our last term, doing the same thing. Look at number parts first and then letters. So 4 times negative 9 would be negative 36 x, we don't have any other x's to combine that with, and then y squared times y cubed is y to the fifth. Remember, when you're multiplying like bases, you have to add those exponents.